what are the kinematics of translational motion translational motion means motion which occurs in a straight line without any rolling without any displacement of the circular part that's why we have studied circular motion separately you all have studied circular motion in the end of laws of motion we have completed the entire topic of circular motion in one go we have completed the entire topic of circular motion whatever portion of circular motion was the basics from this chapter also that we have completed that's why i was saying that this chapter is also no more lengthy for us now okay so yes you know all the three equations of motions the equations of motions means all the uniformly accelerated equation so for all the uniformly accelerated equations you know all these three equations so who can repeat zenab can you repeat all the three equations which we have for uniformly accelerated motion three major equations we have can you repeat it ma'am all okay. with me ma'am is it all with me yes zena ma'am all the three laws of motion v is equal to u plus at that is one equation v is equal to u plus at this is one equation Okay, there are two more equations, Zena. Can you answer? U square is equal to what? U square. Zena, say a little louder. Unmute yourself and answer. You, I know you know all these three equations. You can easily answer. S is equal to half a b square. Yes, and the last one. Which is the third equation, Zainab? V square is equal to two a s plus c square. Hmm. Okay. Shyama and Jaslin have answered it correctly. Also, all uh, right, Zainab and uh, other two students. V is equal to u plus a t. We have three equations which we study. V is equal to u plus a t. S is equal to U T plus half A T square, and one more which is V square minus U square is equal to two K. Now, class, in this portion, when you are studying the kinematics of circular motion, you don't need to remember any other new concept here. No. just remember the rotational analogs what rotational analog which rotational analog is signifying your translational analog see you just remember that theta signifies angular displacement you know this you have you have studied in circular motion all of you have studied it so linear displacement will become rotational displacement and you know rotational displacement is the angular displacement that's it so what is happening currently our translational motion is now converting into rotational motion so you have the angular displacement so instead of linear displacement straight away right angular displacement u u is the initial angular velocity now u uh, sorry u is the initial velocity but when we convert it into our angular velocity u is for linear velocity omega not is written for the initial angular velocity That is the initial velocity in rotation. Not simplify, say, uh, signifies initial, and without this not, it signifies final, final velocity. That is v, which we use for the letter v. Alpha is angular acceleration, which we, which is the rotational analog of acceleration. If you have force used in any equation, put it as tau. Whatever other rotational analogs, mass will become moment of inertia. Moment of inertia we have not discussed. Moment of inertia is written instead of mass. That you will see. So construction of equation is not difficult for you. V is omega. U is omega naught plus a is alpha times t. Your first equation of rotational motion is ready. I'll tell you the. 
de derivation of this because when we were doing these equations in the motion in a straight line, that time I told you that its derivation is same as the rotational part and we will be doing the derivation in the rotational part. So same thing you can use, the same derivation you can use for these also. It's just that you should be careful while writing the symbols. S, S is written as theta. Theta is equal to ut. U is our initial velocity, omega naught. T plus half acceleration is alpha, T squared. See, time won't change in your rotational or translation. So time is the same. Lastly, V squared. What is V squared? V square, we are writing it as omega square, the final velocity. So omega square minus omega naught square is equal to 2 alpha. First equation, second equation, third equation. You have all the equations ready. So if all the equations are ready, you can now easily use it directly in the numericals practice. Write it first. We will see how we derive it. First start writing this. Yes, yes, Anna, this is the new topic. Do write, everybody write this. The next portion, Zainab, from where you have left from there. Ma'am, can you please scroll down?
yes and uh, both are same impulsive force and impulse both are same impulse is one term to represent it impulsive force but because your impulse is also a force only force that acts for a short duration of time it is impulsive force and it is impulse so both are same it's just that you can use it as synonyms and you can encounter it also as synonyms uh other students also completed so that we can start Okay, so what we'll start with, we'll start with the formula of angular acceleration. Yes, Ali, what is the formula of angular acceleration in terms of angular velocity? Ali Muhammad, what is the formula? What is the formula for angular acceleration, Ali? We have studied this. Ma'am, uh, delta, delta W by delta V. Delta? Uh, sorry. Okay, delta, you can say further. Delta what? Say. That is the formula of omega, Shaima. I'm asking the formula of angular acceleration, alpha. Yes, Ali, please complete. I think you know it. Ma'am, uh, delta omega by delta V. Delta omega over delta T. Perfect, that's right. So what we are going to do, Ali is correct. When you have a duration, when you have to write the average formula, we write it as delta omega by delta T. That is the change in the angular velocity divided by the change in time. Change in time, you can say, or you can say time duration. Now we are going to use the instantaneous one. That is alpha. We are going to use the one which is alpha. Um, uh, sorry, d alpha over dt. So for d alpha over dt, alpha is equal to d omega over dt. So omega is, now see, if you transfer it here, so this will be alpha dt. See what we will be left with d omega will be equal to alpha dt. Correct? From when you are integrating it from 0 to certain value of, sorry, alpha written, certain value of time t. And omega also you will equate it from initial to final value. Omega naught to omega. So omega's integral is omega from omega naught to omega is equal to alpha becomes alpha is a constant integral of dt is t from 0 to t so omega minus omega naught is equal to alpha t minus 0 so this fade becomes omega minus omega naught is equal to alpha t minus 0 you have the equation omega is equal to omega naught plus alpha t. Now, if you are deriving it for a linear motion, you will start your calculation as acceleration is equal to dv over dt, dv is equal to a dt from 0 to t from u to v. Same derivation you are going to perform. So, I would suggest that when you are writing in the notebook, after writing this part, suppose first, this heading you have made, this derivation you have written, then write the translation one also so that you have both the derivations together. That was the purpose also of not telling the derivation in the previous question. Next, you have the equation theta is equal to omega t plus half alpha t square. Correct. So see, uh, now we'll use the equation which you were answering, Shaima. Shaima said omega is equal to d theta over dt. She is right. Omega is equal to d theta over dt. Now, when you transfer dt towards the left-hand side, you have omega dt 
is equal to and here we are just left with theta. So from 0 to t, why? Because the function here is t and here the function is theta. So from 0 to theta. What is omega? We have calculated in the first equation. We know, we have already calculated, we know omega is equal to omega naught plus alpha t. So if we put this in this equation, you know, omega, this entire term. So first omega naught dt plus, then we have this alpha t dt. From 0 to t, this is also from 0 to t. Here we have, we were left with theta, d theta from 0 to theta. So when you will integrate it, let's integrate this. Omega t is a constant term, t from 0 to t plus alpha. This is t, it becomes t square by 2 from 0 to 2 is equal to theta from 0 to theta. So I think we are getting our answers. Omega naught is t minus 0 plus alpha t square minus 0 square. Theta, theta minus 0. What is the final equation? Theta is equal to omega naught t and this is plus alpha t square by 2 which we see of alpha t. Okay, last one. Omega square minus omega naught square, square is equal to 2 alpha theta. So, uh, Ali has told us that alpha is equal to d omega over dt. If we multiply it by d theta and divide it by, by the same, that is d theta. Jobita, you tell me what is this quantity which I am highlighting? Which quantity is this which I am highlighting? Yes, Jyobita. Yes, Jyobita. D theta over dt. What is it? Shaima is correct. Jyobita, this was a question for you. P. Which what? What is d theta over dt, Jobita? Angular speed. Angular velocity. So, angular velocity. Angular velocity. Right. So, omega. Shaima also answered it correctly. Omega is equal to d theta over dt. So, now we will put it here. So, what do we have? D, C. d theta over dt is omega. This term is omega. D omega. <laughs> then we are left with D omega over D theta. Let's shift this on the opposite side. So alpha D theta is equal to omega D omega. Uh, this will be integrated from 0 to theta. This will be integrated from initial velocity to final velocity. Now, alpha is a constant term. Alpha, theta is from 0 to theta. This is omega square by 2 from omega naught to omega. So, this becomes alpha theta minus 0 is equal to half omega square minus omega naught square. 2 will be transferred, 2 will be multiplied here. So, omega square minus omega naught square is equal to 2 alpha e2. This is the third equation statement. Write down all these and one more thing class. After first part, write down. Then write down the same equation for the translation one. Then second one, then the translation one. It's for your beneficial only, it's for your benefit only. 
it will be beneficial for you. you just write the first part then the trans rotation translation rotational translation because when you will be revising you'll have both the things together
alpha t square by 2 and half alpha t square both are same. So it's the same thing.
Okay, so this question says on application of a constant torque, a wheel is turned from rest through 400 radian in 10 seconds. Find angular acceleration and angular velocity after 20 seconds. See. In the first part, let us do one thing. Let us find out what is alpha. Alpha is not given. Angular acceleration we have to find out. So let's find out alpha. Theta is equal to, let's use the second equation. Second equation is valid here. That can be easily applied. Omega naught t plus half alpha t squared. Now, it is starting from rest. If it is starting from rest, straight away this will be 0. So, uh, this is 400, 400. So, 400, this is 0, half. Alpha is missing. Time is 20 into 20. So, 20 into 20 will cancel this 400. Alpha will be equal to 2 radian per second square. And what was the other thing that was asked? Uh, angular velocity. So, which equation we can use? Alpha, we have first equation. Omega is equal to omega naught plus alpha t. Omega t will again be 0. Straight away, we have 2 into 20. So, omega is equal to 40 radian per. Okay, yes. This uh, one more thing I wanted to tell. One rotation, when we say one rotation, it is equal to 2 pi radian. Do you know this? One basically pi is 180 degrees. So 2 times 180 degrees, 2 pi radian. When we say one rotation, it's 2 pi radian. And one revolution is also 2 pi radian. See, when we're talking in terms of time, then rotation and revolutions have different meanings. But when we are talking in terms of angles, angle, the complete value of angle cannot be more than 360 degree. That's why if whether it's one rotation or it's one revolution, the total angle possible is 360 degree itself. That's why one rotation is also equal to 2 pi radian. One revolution is also equal to 2 pi radian. You do not con get confused with uh, time. Do not confuse it with time. Time is different. One rotation has 24 hours. One revolution has 365 days. So this is different. That is one year. That is one day. Time is different. But angle ultimately will be the same because a circle is completed in both the cases. The radius of the circle is different, the diameter of the circle and the other parameters of circle is different. But the uh, angle which is finally subtended is, is the complete angle and the angle cannot be more than 360 degree. We know that's the maximum value possible for any angle. So when we say one rotation per minute or one revolution per minute, RPM will be given to you. It can be rotation per minute, it can be revolution per minute. So you need not con get confused because whether it's rotation or revolution, uh, for our angle, we'll be using 2 pi radian. So, revolution per minute, 2 pi radian per 60 seconds. So, you use pi by 30 radian per second. So, RPM is given, multiply by pi by 30. RPM will be given, so multiply by pi by 30 and then solve your answer. Uh, write this also, then I'll discuss that. Uh, torque is basically the rotational analog of force. So the way we say uh, on application of a constant force, when the body starts from rest, this much of velocity is exerted in 10 seconds. It's a similar question in rotation. Constant force. You So just uh, take it as a term force. We'll be doing torque after this only.
Uh, yes, uh, Jessalyn, the value is right. It says that it will be radian per second square because it is acceleration. So one more time, dimension gets multiplied. So right, see, this is that angular speed of a motor wheel increases from 1200 to 3120 rotations per minute in 16 seconds. What is the angular acceleration assuming to be uniform? How many revolutions does the wheel make during this time? See, first part says, firstly, you have to convert this. Omega naught is given as 1200. So, as I've told you, you have to multiply RPM by pi by 30. 40. So, this is 40 pi radian per second. Secondly, this is omega. This is initial. So, this is the final one. Uh, that was 3120 RPM. So, it is 3120 into pi by 30, 104. So this is equal to 104 by radian per second. So first part says that what is alpha? That is angular acceleration. You know time is 16 seconds. So if you use the equation omega is equal to omega naught plus alpha t, only this is missing which we have to calculate. So 104 pi is equal to uh, 40 pi plus 16 t. So when you subtract it, it will be 64. 64 pi is equal to 16. Oh, sorry, I'm writing t alpha. Alpha, alpha will be equal to 64 by 16 pi 4. Alpha is equal to 4 pi radian per second square. Second part is theta is equal to omega naught t plus half alpha t square. So theta is equal to 40 pi. Time is 16 plus half alpha is 4 pi t square. T is 16 into 16. So um, let's calculate the 6, 0. So 24, 25, here this 2 will be cancelled. So 256 doubled pi. From here when you add it, so it will be pi uh, 0, 2, 2, 4, 5, 1, 1 goes up. So 1, 1, 1, 1, 5, 2, 5, 3. Let's check the solution also somewhere. Okay, class. Uh, write it down. Let's stop. Okay, one more thing. It is saying how many revolutions. So, wait, wait. Number of revolutions. See. This is angular displacement. This is not the number of revolutions. C class 2 pi radian is equal to 1 revolution. So 1 radian will be equal to 1 by 2 pi revolutions. So for 1 radian, you know it is 1 by 2 pi revolutions. So for 1, uh, 1, 1, 5, 2 pi Radian, we have 1, 1, 5, 2 pi by 2 pi. Pi pi cancel. This is 5, 1, 7, 1, 6 revolutions. Okay, number is this.